This video reviews the process of using gel electrophoresis to separate or really to identify the uh, success of the PCR that you should have already conducted on the picked colonies from the microbiome uh, cultures. So you're going to assemble a casting tray, as I'm showing here, um, an eight a well comb goes into that casting tray. And then you'll be preparing a 1% agarose solution to actually cast the gel. Your instructor will have provided you with a flask containing 50 milliliters or approximately 50 milliliters of 1% agarose. Um, this has been boiled um, and you should allow it to cool until you can handle the flask with your bare hands. And then um, added to that agarose is five microliters of a uh, dye. Um, gel red is what we're using. Um, it's a relatively benign dye. This is going to allow you to visualize, to actually see the DNA um, in the gel. Now, spoiler alert, the amount of gel red that you just saw me put into that flask is the incorrect amount. I probably put in 10 times what should have gone in there. Your gel will not look red like this if you put the correct amount in. Um, but there's no harm in this additional amount. It's just a waste of gel red. Pouring your gel should be done with the comb already in place. Um, if there are any bubbles that form, use a pipette tip to move the bubble off to the side. And then don't touch the casting tray. Let it solidify. It'll take, oh, five or ten minutes for it to solidify, and then you'll be ready to load your gel. So once more, the amount of gel red you're going to put into the 1% agarose is 5 microliters, 5.0 microliters. When you do that, the gel is not going to appear red. Um, it will look pretty much clear. But under a fluorescent light, uh, DNA will fluoresce red in the presence of that dye. Once the gel has solidified, then get your running tray. Gently pull the comb out of the gel by pulling directly upright and then gently pull the casting uh, tray holding the gel out of the casting unit and place it in the running unit. Then you're going to take TAE buffer, it's a, just a salt solution that will conduct a current and pour that into the wells at the ends of the running tray. Um, you want to put in enough so that you just cover the gel and you fill the wells of the gel with that buffer. Now you're ready to take your PCR samples as well as a DNA ladder and put those samples and the DNA ladder into the wells of your gel. You will want to pipette five microliters of your uh, PCR sample into each well of the electrophoresis gel. Remember that um, you want to save the rest of your PCR uh, product so that if you are successful, if you had successful amplification, you will uh, be able to send that uh, amplified DNA for Sanger sequencing. It does help sometimes to steady your pipette tip with uh, your non-dominant hand so that it doesn't shake, particularly when you're going into the well of the gel. And finally, remember that when you gently squeeze your sample into a well, keep the plunger down and then pull your pipetter out of the well before you let up on the plunger. Otherwise, you're going to suck your sample right back up out of the well. In each gel, the leftmost lane, the leftmost well, should get seven microliters of a DNA ladder. This should be a 100 base pair ladder. 
that will provide you with DNA of uh, known base pair sizes between 100 base pairs and 1500 base pairs long. Once the gel is loaded, then put the cap on the running tray. Um, you can see the wells are farthest away from me here. Um, that's where the negative terminal should be because DNA is going to move from the negative terminal toward the positive terminal. Run your electrophoresis at 135 volts. This is direct current. Um, this is dangerous, so don't be touching bare wires. Um, and run the gel um, until the uh, front of the die, that is the, the front of the uh, electrophoresis, is at least three quarters of the way down toward the positive terminal. Once the electrophoresis is completed, you can move your gel um, on its tray, on its carrier tray, to a UV transilluminator, and you'll see results that look like this. Lane 1 contains the DNA ladder. You can see from the DNA ladder the um, smallest fragment size is at the bottom of the gel on the uh, far right-hand side in this image. Uh, that's 100 base pairs long. At the other end, at the left-hand side, is DNA that are the largest in size. There's a bright band at 500, a bright band at 1,000 base pairs long. And you can see that most of the DNA that amplified in our samples, um, essentially all the DNA, is about 1,400 base pairs long. Lane 7 and 8 on this gel are a negative control and a positive control, respectively. And you can see that all of the five picked colony samples um, yielded very good amplification. So all five of those samples could be sent for Sanger sequencing. In this other gel, um, not the, all the samples amplified as well as in that first gel, but even the sample that's shown in the far lane, in lane 8, um, even though it's faint, that amplification is sufficient for uh, Sanger sequencing to be done successfully. If you're not sure, show your instructor the results of your uh, electrophoresis, and then those samples uh, that were successfully amplified, make sure you provide your instructor with at least 10 microliters of your PCR sample um, in a very clearly marked sterile uh, microfuge tube so that your instructor can prepare that sample to be sent for Sanger sequencing.